Okay, so we're at the 6.4 practice, and as you may notice, this doesn't look like what we just did. No, it does not. Um, we're going to skip the front page and just go to the back. That's more like it. Okay, so the first four problems, 7, 8, 9, and 10, are exactly like what you just did. So just go ahead and fill in the answers. So I'm highlighting the made segment just to kind of help with the vocabulary of it all. Um, but just like we just did, this is the midpoint here, so therefore this is the same length as this, so this is six. This right here, again, this hits at the midpoint, so these two are the same measure, so x must equal eight. And then for number nine, the mid segment would be half of this length, so this would be 13. And then for number 10, this is five, then this is gonna be double that, so it would be 10. Now you might be thinking that's way too easy. It is. Um, I'm going to put two more examples here that are similar to what you'll see on the homework that just takes it up a little bit higher because that was too easy. Okay, so on the homework, you might get a problem that looks like this. Here, I'm just sketch it out on your paper. And you might get this exact problem too, so just so you know. Okay, so here's a triangle. Let's call this the mid segment. Might not be to scale, that's all right. Um, let's say this is x plus nine. It's a nine there. And this is 2x minus three. Okay, so here they bring in an expression, but the same rules still apply. This is half of the length of this. Um, I don't like using fractions, so I wouldn't use half. I would actually use two. So two of these would equal this. So that's how I'm going to set it up. Two, two x minus threes equals x plus nine. And now we can solve for x. So then you just distribute. And we get x equals 5. And then we'll do one more example like that. Again, these exact examples could be on your homework. So we'll call this the mid segment right here. And we'll say that this is 35 units. And then this mid segment is x minus 8. Okay, so how I'd set it up is two of these should equal that length there. So 2 times x minus 8 equals 35. And then just solve for x. At 2x equals 51, I might get a decimal here. So x equals 25.5. Okay. Easy enough. And then the next set of problems. For the next set of problems, it wants to know what segments are parallel to what. So here is asking, what is parallel to JK? So I find JK right here, and the line parallel to that would be this. So YZ. And then before I like draw all over this, I wanna skip to number 15. I think that's right, no, okay, I lied, 16. Okay, we're gonna skip to number 16 before I draw all over this. Okay, so JK is wondering what it's congruent to or what it's the same length as. So here I have JK highlighted right here. Um, if I look at this, remember this is double the length and this also hits at the median of that segment. So therefore, this is the same length as this, which is also the same length as this. So JK would then be equal to YL and LZ.
Does that make sense? So since this is half of the length of this, and then this is the midpoint, then both of the, it's all the same. Okay, so going back up to number 12, it wants to know what's parallel to JL. JL's right here. And what's parallel to that? It's right here. So XZ. And then 15 asks, asks about what's congruent to JL. Well, this would be equal to this, which would be equal to this. So X, K, and K, Z. Okay, and then X, Y right here wants to know what's parallel to that. Well, it would be this segment right here, K, L. And then it wants to know what's congruent to JY. Ooh, I use pen. So JY would then be equal to this segment right here, as well as this one right here. So JY equals XJ and KL. Okay, and moving on to the word problems down here. It says, 17, modeling real life. The distance between consecutive bases on a baseball field is 90 feet. Okay, so distance here is 90 feet. And then, like all these distances are 90 feet. This would be 90, this would be 90, this would be 90 over here, 90 feet, and so on. The pitcher's field the pitcher fields a ball halfway between first base and third base. The pitcher fields a ball halfway between first base and third base. So right here, second base? Is that what it's talking about? I don't know. Find the distance between the shortstop and the pitcher. Why did you just say that to begin with? Shortstop and pitcher right here. Oh, that's easy. Well, if this is 90 feet, then this would be half of that, so it would be 45 feet. That's the answer. Okay, and then number 18, it says modeling real life. Oak Street intersects Walmart, Wal, Walnut Street and Maple Street at their midpoints. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in too. It says Oak Street right here intersects at the midpoint, so that means this is a mid segment. Okay, um, a parade float starts at point S, okay, and travels up Walnut Street. Okay, so from S to Walnut Street right here. Then travels up to Oak Street, up Oak Street to Maple Street, so it goes this way. Over Maple Street to Spruce Street, so then it goes here. And then down Spruce Street. Oh, okay. Um, about how far does the float travel? Okay, so we have to find that distance there. Well, this is labeled 1.8, so we got that. Um, this right here, this would hit at the midpoint, so half of 0.9 would be 0.45 here. And then right here, this hits at the midpoint as well. 1.8 divided by 2 would be 0.9. Is that right? And then this segment right here would be half of 1.8, so that would be 0.9 as well. And then we can add those values together. So 0.9 plus 0.9 plus 0.45 plus 1.8. If you plug that into a calculator, then you would get 4.05 miles. And that's it. Okay, so now you have time to do your homework. Homework should be pretty easy. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you finish homework, 